when we talk about an angle, we talk about uh, this space between two lines when they meet. So, for example, we're talking about this space between uh, this line going over there. Let's name this line BC. BC, this red line, and then AC. This uh, this black line. Okay, so when these lines actually meet, they actually create two angles, B2 and B1. So today we're going to be talking about Euclidean geometry in grade 10. So this uh, this is just more depth compared to other grades. So you can see that here, if we have B1 and B2, if you add them together, they actually give you a 180 degrees. So this suggests that angles on a straight line sum up to 180 degrees, no matter how many they are. Even if I was to add another angle here that says C, C here, I will say B2 plus C plus B1 is equal to 180 degrees. So all of them must sum up to 180 degrees. So for this case, we have got uh, this angle B1, this space, and then this angle B2, this other space. So if we're going to add those angles, they must always give us 180 degrees. So those are called supplementary angles because they actually add up to 180 degrees. And then we have got angles around the point. So angles around the point just suggest that from here, this point, we are creating angle A, right? And then this angle A plus this angle C, this space, and then from here plus angle B will result in, 300, in a 360 degrees angle. So if you add the total of those must give you 360 degrees. So that's a whole revolution. So uh, we can go to our other type of angles, uh, which are called for vertically opposite angles. So these are called vertically opposite angles. So here, let me actually have one line here, one line drawn and another one drawn. Okay, so if we can see here, let us put, a, for example, angle 80 degrees here. And then the angle you're going to find here, which is opposite to this 80 degrees, is also going to be equal to this angle as well. So it means that angles which are actually vertically opposite in this way are equal to each other. So if this is 80 degrees, even here, it is 80 degrees. And then if this is, uh, let's see, if this is 20 degrees, and then also here, it is also 20 degrees. So these are vertically opposite angles. So it means that when you've got a cross-like shape, it means that the angles you're going to find here are going to be called to this. And then the angle you're going to find here is going to be called to that one. So that is actually vertically opposite angles. And then let us go to another type of angles called corresponding angles. So corresponding angles only happen when you've got parallel lines. So these angles are subtended by a parallel lines, meaning that if you do not have parallel lines, you cannot have the following angles. So let us uh, take for example, here's a line going over there and then here's another line. So when lines are parallel, it just means that they're going in the same direction. As you can see, this one is going over there, this one as well. Or you can even say it's going over there and also this one is going the same direction but then they are going the same direction but then they will never meet so those are called parallel lines so parallel lines always are uh, in the textbooks they're going to indicate to you by something like this these arrows will show you that these are parallel lines do not guess that this is a parallel line no they have to tell you in the statement or in the question uh, or they can show you with these arrows that those lines are parallel. So let's see what angles can we find within the parallel lines. If we were to put a line over here, just this line, and then let's say this is point A, and then this is point B, this is point C, as well as this is point D. So we can see that line AB, when, I take, when I'm talking about line AB, we're talking about the line that connects points A and B, is parallel to line CD. Okay, so line CD is actually parallel to line AB. So here, let's uh, let us see what angles uh, do we have. So we have got corresponding angles. Corresponding angles appear when the angle over here is equal to this angle over there. So let us say this is angle X. 
This one also is going to be angle X, meaning that those are equal. So to be able to actually memorize how to actually find the position of those angles, I uh, just have to notice that this makes an A shape. So if you have got parallel lines and you have got an A shape, if you can see this, uh, with the, this part which I drawn with the red, so let me just highlight with green in this way, it makes a kind of an F shape. So this F shape just tells you that the angle you're going to find here is going to correspond with that angle you're going to find over there. Okay, so we also have another type of angles in, um, in parallel lines. Okay, we can say that angle X at this point is equal to angle uh, X here. Let me just say this X is equal to that X. Okay, let us actually see what's happening there. So you can see that we've got a line here. And then it makes some form of a Z shape. So it's kind of a Z shape. So it means uh, those lines are actually, uh, the, the, the angles we're going to find are actually going to be alternating. So we've got a Z shape. And then let's say we have an angle there and we have an angle there. So it means that the angle you're going to find here is going to be equal to this angle you're going to find over there. So this is the same applies to this X. You can see that here there's an angle. And then if we form this Z shape with this blue shape, uh, the, this blue color, you can see that these are actually making a Z shape. So it means that angle X at this point is equal to angle X at this point as well because those angles are alternating. So those are called alternating angles. So remember, you can only have these angles when you've got parallel lines between. So if you do not have parallel lines and you just see an F shape, that does not tell you that you have alternating angles as well as corresponding ones. So we have got another type of angles which is found in parallel lines. So if I'm going to put an angle Y here, let's say I put an angle Y here. So the value of angle X at this point plus y is actually going to be equals to 180 degrees so that means that x plus y is going to result in 180 degrees okay so those are called co-interior angles so co-interior angles they're in the interior part of the parallel lines by the interior part i just mean by uh, in the in the inside part so uh, let me just rub over here so that i can create space so here if i'm going to draw out here you can see that there's a hue shape from this point here at B up to point D. There's a kind of a U shape. So whenever you see a U shape between parallel lines, meaning that this line over here is parallel to this line over there, you might have uh, the core interior angles here. So it means that the angle you're going to find here will be added to this angle X to give you a uh, 180 degrees angle. So those are core interior angles so these are the angles which we have actually in in parallel lines so for for the corresponding angles it just makes an f shape so meaning that the angle you're gonna find here is going to be equal to the angle you're gonna find over there that's an f shape and then for alternating angles it will make a z shape whereby the angle you're gonna find here is going to be close to that angle so just remember a z and then for the core interior angles they are in the interior part of the parallel lines meaning that they're inside these two parallel lines meaning that if you're gonna actually add these two together they're gonna result in an angle of 180 degrees so to actually memorize this easily you just have to know these are three letters so that's like f u and just say fun so f for corresponding angles this angle and this angle u for co interior angles this angle and that angle and then n uh, this can be written as z but then this is n meaning that this angle here and this angle here are going to be equal so these are the lines and angles which we are going to definitely use in trigonometry stay tuned as we explore more about the congruency of triangles thank you for watching